Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we're looking at another Microsoft Access Learning lesson and we're looking at input mask validations. Now, masks are usually a bit complicated. They're a way of ensuring that in a field only certain character positions can have certain uh, kinds of data entered into that specific position. And hopefully by the end of today's lesson, uh, you'll be a lot clearer on input masks and it'll make a lot more sense. So it's hats off and sunglasses off. Ooh, and yeah, that's so much better. All right, and let's get into it. Okay, so input masks, it restricts uh, what types of keyboard characters can be entered into the positions in a field. So an input mask, can help us out a lot with things like phone number. So if the phone number is all bunched up together like this, it's hard to read and hard to see and hard to enter. It's much better if it can be displayed uh, with sort of like an area code in front of this was an Australian 10 digit number and then the digits separated by hyphens. It'd be nice if that was on all the tables and all the forms and we can do that with input masks. Uh, the other thing is that like things like the seller ID, this primary uh, key, which is on our seller's table and in the seller's form here, it consists of six letters plus three numbers on the end. So what we need to do is make sure they can only type in uppercase capital big letters here and that they have to do six of them. And then the other three positions must be filled in and they must be numbers. So all of that can be done with input masks. So they're fantastic for uh, getting the right data entered into your fields. If we look at an example here, like uh, let's say Australian postcodes, but American zip codes would be the same thing, except you guys have five digits instead of four. Like when I went to high school in McLean, Virginia in the US, uh, I think our postcode in Virginia, we were 22101. That was our five digit uh, zip code for the postal service. Now in Australia, we have four digit ones and it needs to have all four digits. So the way we can do that is there's two masks in access for numbers. There's the nine mask and the zero mask. Now, if you use the nine mask, it's optional for whether you have to put the numbers in or not. So people could just enter on this example in the top left-hand corner. They could just put in 41 if they wanted to and stop there. They don't have to do all four digits. Whereas if you use the mask of zero, 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 the zeros mean that the digits must be typed in there and they must be numbers between zero and nine. So that'll ensure that all four numbers get filled in on a postcode. So that's a classic example of using an input mask. In this lesson, we're going to do uh, five different things. We're going to fix up our item ID code in the stock items table. That primary key needs to be made of five uppercase letters and five digits, numbers on the end, whenever we have an item which is a stock item. If we're adding a new seller ID into our seller IDs table, perhaps by using the seller IDs form would be the easiest way to do it. It needs to have six uppercase letters followed by three numerical digits and all of those values must be entered. None can be left blank. So we'll be fixing that up. In step three, we're going to apply a mask to phone numbers so that they can be formatted Australian style as 10 digit numbers. And for step four, we're going to create masks so that first names and last names have to start with an uppercase letter and then the letters following that can be lowercase and you can have as many or as few as you like. And at the end, we're gonna supply a nice little um, one-page reference table, which uh, you'll be able to use to help you out in the future when you're doing masks. Okay, now for this training lesson, we do have a start database file. It's available on our website. If you go to the link, uh, that is in the description of the video. So down in the description section of the video, there's a link to our website. Uh, but even if you don't have our start database, the things we're gonna show you here, if you've got your own database, you could apply these same masking rules into your tables and forms and set it up so that you've got much better validation, much better data being entered into your database. So for our particular system, we're doing the Passy's Bargain Barn, we can analyze what fields we need to uh, perhaps put input masks on. Now we've already got a lot of fields covered. If you go back and look at our 
validation lesson, our field validations lesson, a lot of these fields we've, we've uh, fixed up so that they can only have good data entered into them using just normal validation rules, not input masks. So these are all good here. Status, condition, category all have drop down lists, pick and click lists, combo boxes. So people can only pick and click from the list. They can't enter uh, other things in which will be incorrect. Uh, we've got the start date fixed up so it can't be future dated. So that's all good. We've got email addresses fixed up so they have to have the at sign and the dot in them and be the right sort of uh, structure. Now, the fields which are candidates for masking are shown here. So one we can do is definitely this item ID code, which we've spoken about previously. Uh, the other ones here, we explain what we're doing with those. We already have validation on them. And the freeform text one in the description, well, that's too hard really to put any validation onto. So we won't be doing that. Now in our sellers table, which is also present when we open up the stock IDs form, where we'll be applying masks to that is we'll be applying masks to the seller ID and also to the phone number field. Okay, so we'll be doing those two, seller ID and phone number field. So let's get started. The first one we're going to do is the item ID code in the um, stock items table. Okay, so a stock item has to have one, two, three, four, five L's there. So it must have five uppercase letters and that's what the greater than sign does. It forces them to be uppercase followed by five digits and the five digits must be entered. That's why they're set up as zeros and not as nines. So let's jump across to Microsoft Access. Now, just before we do, we're going to just take that and control C it. So we've got it in memory and we'll be using that very soon. All right, so this is our database here. If we open up the stock items table, you can see in this left-hand column, we've got our item ID code, and we're just gonna go across here in the top left-hand corner into design view. So we clicked onto the item ID code. If we go down the bottom here, you can see the third item down we can set is the input mask. So in this field here, all we have to do is just copy and paste to make it a bit quicker here, just enter that mask that we need a greater than sign, which is uh, somewhere around on your keyboard above the dot or the full stop or period is where you get that with a shift uh, held down. And then we have four ca five capital L's followed by five zeros. So that's basically set up. And all you do is just now go back to data sheet view, save the table, yes. Now in data sheet view, uh, you'll see that if we leave some uh, items out, access has put underscores there, indicating that we need to fill them in. Now, if we try and press enter on that, it's gonna tell you uh, the value entered isn't appropriate for the input mask. Now, unfortunately, you cannot make your own custom messages for the input mask errors, uh, which is a real sort of shortcoming in access. It'd be so much nicer if you could write your own personal message here. Uh, just like you can on a normal validation rule, because this sort of slash greater than, that's just going to uh, really throw people off uh, that aren't computer programmers and don't know access, and they're not going to like that. That's a pretty unfriendly kind of message, but we cannot change it. Uh, that's the way it is. All right. So, and if you try and type in here, like I'm trying to type numbers in here right now, and it won't let me do anything. And if I put in a letter, even though I don't have caps lock on at the moment, it'll come out in uppercase. Now, if I try and type more letters there, I'm clicking, I'm clicking. It won't let me do it because that's forced to be numbers. So you can only put numbers in there. So anyway, we'll just press the escape key uh, to change that all back. So that's all fixed. We've basically done our validation mask rule onto the table. Okay, now let's open the stock items form. Now on the stock items form here, we've got an item ID code. Uh, let's just find that lens we're working on. Here it is here, second record, C lens 001. Now, the thing is, if we uh, change this, we can just make it passy space 456, right? 
Unfortunately, unlike normal validation rules, whatever you did in the table does not automatically flow into the form. So that's something really important to remember that you need to do masks in the tables and then you've got to go do them again separately in each form uh, that you have in your system. So it doesn't automatically flow through from the table into the form. Now, again, don't know why that is. We'll just press the ESC key to restore that back. Uh, but yeah, you have to do them separately in the form. Now, it's very easy to do it in the form because all we have to do is go into layout view here in the top left hand corner, change over into layout view, make sure we clicked in that uh, particular Field. So make sure there's an orange box around that item ID code because we don't want to accidentally put this mask into the wrong field. Then while we're on the design tab up the top here, if we go across to property sheet, on the property sheet, not the format tab here, the first one, but on the data tab, you'll see that the third item down is where we can enter the input mask. So we just basically uh, control V here to save time, just use the same exact input mask. So it's just our greater than sign to force uppercase and we've got our L so that letters must be entered and our five zeros so that five digits must be entered. And that's all there is to it. And if we now go up the top left hand corner and go back to form view and we try and delete all of this, you can see we've got underscore signs there to give us an idea of how long it should be. And if we try and type passy space, see it won't even let me Click, click, click. Won't even let me do anything with the space bar there. So it's forcing me to type numbers here as well. So I can't, can't type any letters. They've got to be numbers. So it's forcing the five capital letters, uppercase letters and the numbers. So that's all working. Let's just press escape to change it back. Uh, so that's all good. We could save the form and close it. So now we've got it onto the forms and our other forms like the sold items, we would have to also uh, do it on this field. Although sold items is okay actually because due to this functional rule, once something's sold, we don't change the item ID code. So we could actually get out of putting it on that one. We don't have to. And the same with the, uh, what else have we got? The unsold items one. Um, that's a field which we can't edit after something hasn't sold. So we don't actually have to put the mask on there, but you could if you want to. All right, so that's pretty much uh, that step one finish. Now, if you get our guide, it's got step by step here what we just did in the video. So it's worth getting the guide, uh, which if you go to the link in the YouTube description, you can see where that's available on our website. Now, a little assignment for you guys is that we need an input mask on the seller ID. So the seller ID is another primary identifier, a primary key. This is in the sellers table, this one. And this one consists of one, two, three, four, five, six letters and three digits. And all of them have to be entered, okay? So the mask is here. So if you've got the guide, you could even copy and paste it out of there. You need to put that into the sellers table and test it. You need to put it into the stock items form and test it. There's also, I think in the stock items table that would need to go in and also into the sellers form. So we gotta do sellers table, stock items form, sellers form. And I think you also have to do the stock items table, although uh, we haven't mentioned that there. So all of that needs to be set up for the seller ID and this will be a bit of a learning practice for you. So if you want to just pause the video here and go ahead and do that practice. Okay, next up, let's talk about phone numbers. So phone numbers are the next thing we're doing. Now, Australian phone numbers are 10 digits long and we have this two digit area code, then a set of four and a set of four which will bring you up to 10 altogether. Same sort of thing for mobile phones, they're 10 digits long. We don't have shorter numbers. Well, actually we do. We have these one, three numbers for ordering pizza and things like that, but people uh, aren't gonna use them as their number when they're a seller in the bargain barn. So we don't have to worry about that. So it's just 10 digits is what's gonna be required, the full 10 digits. Now, we don't wanna just use 
10 zeros, right, for our mask. That would make it so they had to enter 10 digits. We want something a lot more user-friendly. So it'd be nice if we had some brackets for the area code and hyphens in between the other four digit sets. And that's fairly standard thing for entering a phone number. Now we can do that and we can use the expression builder, uh, which is a thing which helps us bit like a wizard uh, to help us out do this, do, sorry, doing this. So when we're in the uh, phone number, in the table, when we're in the seller's table, these triple dots over on the right hand side, which are called the expression builder, or they're called the builder, sometimes they're called the ellipsis, ellipsis, we just call them the triple dots, but we need to click on those and that's going to help us use the wizard to help us. So let's go across to access and do that. So we will open up the sellers table and we will go into design view and where the phone number is here, that's our phone number. So we'll click in that. We'll go down to this third field down. Now, if we click in there and then go right over here to the right hand side, uh, let's just shrink that column a little bit. You can see the little set of triple dots, the ellipsis, which takes you in the expression builder. So we build that. Now this takes us into the input mask wizard. Okay. Now the wizard has some pre-formatted for pre-formatted pre phone numbers. And because we were messing around with this before, we actually have one with spaces that we could use for the Australian number. If you're in the US, I think it has three digits here. It has the American phone number. Uh, we've set up one for postal code. Uh, and also if you're in America to have one set up for zip code. Okay, but when we flick through these, there isn't one with hyphens, okay? So we could actually, I think, click on this one and go in and edit it and change it to have hyphens, but we might leave that as the spaces version in case we need it later. So we're gonna make a brand new one. So to do that, you edit the list. We want to add a brand new masking rule onto this list that is contained inside the mask wizard. So we go to edit list. Now, when we get in edit list, we see some of the ones which are already there, okay? Uh, so we could um, see that we've already got a phone number. If you click this little arrow here to go to the next record, uh, there's another one for phone number. I think that's American format there with the three uh, numbers. And there's one for postal code. And if we keep flicking, uh, we get to the last record and that's where we can enter a new one of our own. Or I think you can actually be on one of these other ones and click the little sunshine symbol down here and get a new blank record. Uh, but anyway, let's just go to the last record, the very last one, and that gives us a blank one. Okay, so this one we're going to call phone number and AUST for Australia. Okay, so this is for Australia. Now, entering the input mask, we can just kind of actually type in uh, the way we'd like it. So we want to use zeros, we want them to enter all of the numbers, then we want a hyphen, then we want one, two, three, four zeros, because they must enter those numbers. If you put in nines there, the mask would mean that it's optional and they do not have to necessarily enter them, but we want them to enter all of them. So we put that in. For the placeholder here, uh, you can put in different symbols for the placeholder. The placeholder is when it's blank, Access is gonna put all these underscores, and that's a nice one because it you know, just has the underline and it makes it obvious that they're typing on that blank line. So we're just leaving it at that and not changing it to a different character. Now here's where it builds your mask and you can try it out. So we can try out some sample data. So let's try and enter say a phone number uh, like that. So that's a nice Australian phone number and that's working fine. So this is good. So this is ready to go. Now to save it, there isn't a save button or anything like that. When you close it, it will be saved. So we just close this, use the close button. Now what's happening now is if we go down and look, click into our phone number, uh, nothing's happening yet. What we need to do the next step, this isn't kind of obvious, but it sort of is if you think about it, we just added a new rule to that list that's in the mask wizard. Okay, so if we go down here, we should be able to find it somewhere. And see here it is here, phone number AUST, phone number Austin, that's how it looks with the hyphens in it. So we actually just select that one and that's the one we want to use. And so we click finish here. 
What that will do is down in the input mask for phone number, it's now going to put the finish mask in. Now, if you take a close look at that mask, hmm, Access has put in some extra symbols. We've got this backslash and we've got quotes in there and some semicolons on the end. So, whoa, is something wrong here? Like, what's all that about? Well, that's actually okay. Sort of Access has like this artificial intelligence, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you're a coder and you want to do things from first principles, you could have just not used the wizard and coded this yourself. Now, even if you don't code it yourself actually and just enter bracket 00-000, Access has this artificial intelligence that builds the extra coding that it needs to process this. Now that extra coding, what the slash does here in front of that bracket means that Access isn't going to try and substitute in anything else. It's going to put the bracket on the screen as it is. It's literal. It's literally going to be one bracket on the screen. That's going to start off the mask for what has to be entered. Then 00, zero means people have to enter a couple of numbers. Now after that, in quotes, we've got close the brackets and a hyphen. So on the screen, Access will put literally close a bracket and the hyphen and it won't let people type over the top of it or anything. And same sort of thing here, that just makes the hyphen stick there in the right place where people can't type over it. And a couple of semicolons on the end is just saying this is where the mask ends. So that's what kind of Access is doing behind the scenes all for its own process. Now, if you're a hardcore coder, we've got a guide at the end and you can learn this stuff and code it up yourself. With your bare hands, like a coder, that's kind of the way I work because I did computer programming for a while. But it's probably a lot nicer to just use the wizard or just type it in. And even if you miss out the slashes, Access has got this AI and it just puts it in. So that's really cool. Okay, so let's uh, check this out now to see that it works on the table. So we'll go back to... Microsoft Access. So we've got all that finished. So let's just flick over here in the left hand corner into data shoot view, save the table. Yes. Now this is great. We just need to go up the top there till we get the double arrows and widen, press down the mouse and widen that a bit. There we are. Access now has our phone numbers stored in that nice easy to read format which is a lot nicer to look at and a lot nicer if we're doing a brand new customer and a new brand new seller customer and we need to enter things in now if you leave digits out say you're trying to make some sort of number that just has a set of three and a set of three as soon as you click on the next one you get the error message now unfortunately the error message is you know this big ugly actual mask that Access uses for its own processing. So people might look at that and go, mm, yeah, I kind of understand why there's four kind of zero numbers and a hyphen, but what's that slash and what are the quotes? And do I have to try and type quotes in? And I can't do quotes because the quotes aren't there. So really, I don't like this. I wish it was like the validation rules where you could write your own custom message, uh, but you cannot do that. Now we're using Access 2016 here. Perhaps in Access 2019, you can make a custom message, but I haven't read anything on the internet about that. We were supposed to be making these videos with 2019 because it was getting re released on October 1st, but it's not available for us to buy as a mere mortal person. Only I think the big companies have it at the moment and it's being released for sort of the regular guys um, in a few weeks time. So look, if there is something in Access 2019 to fix this problem, we'll certainly annotate the video and let you know about that. All right, so that's pretty much uh, the table all done with its masking validation for phone number. Now, the thing is that that rule uh, we now need that rule to go and fix up the seller's form. Now, one way we can do it is we could just color in the rule here in design view and control C it. So using control and C, we've copied that into the computer's memory. So let's save the table. Let's close this property sheet. Let's close the table and let's go into the seller's form. Okay, so in the seller's form, make sure you clicked in the phone number field and 
in the left hand corner here going to layout view. Now just make sure you're in the phone number field because when you first go into a form, it's always on the primary key, the first field, and you might accidentally put the phone number mask onto this and that's gonna like totally mess up your database. So you gotta be a little bit careful doing this. Uh, so make sure you're clicked onto the actual phone field. Then in design, go onto property sheet, go to the data tab, the second tab here, and the third one down is the mask. And what we can do is we can copy and paste the mask in, and then the mask will be there. Perhaps if we move this column, you can see all of it. Okay, now that's the way I kind of do things because I'm a coder and you know, you usually find a piece of code from some other program and you think, yeah, I can just copy and paste that code out of there into my new program and that's the way it works. But you don't actually have to do it this way. Let's just backspace out of there. So we don't have to copy it from the table because remember we made a new wizard uh, listing entry. So we can click on the triple dots here to open up the expression builder, the wizard to help us out. And there's our input mask wizard. And if we go down in that input mask wizard, we should have here phone number for Australia. And that's what we want it to look like. So we just click finish. And notice here, it's put in that exact same rule with all of Access's internal characters for processing. So once you've added something to the wizard for doing your forms, it's a whiz. See what I did there? Yeah, it's just a wizard because you can just click on the triple dots, go into your input mask wizard, find out where you've saved the custom rule you made and just say finish and it'll put that rule in there for you. Okay, so that's all ready to go. All we need to do is uh, now change over in the left hand corner here into form view and you can see our numbers if we go through the sellers are all formatted in that nice format. And if we're entering a new seller or we're trying to change a number and we leave digits out and don't do it correctly, we get the error message, even though it's not a really nice error message. So let's just click OK there and press escape. So that is phone numbers done. And in our database, they're only on the sellers form. So that's the only thing we need to do for the phone numbers. All right, so we're making good progress here. If you uh, wanna take a mini break, uh, you could just pause the video now. Uh, now the next thing we're gonna look at is the input mask for names. But like, if you need a break, just pause the video now and um, just have a little break. Okay, welcome back. Now with names, uh, usually of a name, the first letter is capital, and then after that you have little letters, all right? So we can sort of force it uh, with a mask for that to happen in Microsoft Access. So if we use a greater than sign, that's gonna make sure this L, which is a letter which must be typed in because it's the L symbol, that's gonna force it to be a capital letter. And then we go back to lowercase by using the left less than symbol. And all these question marks mean letters have to be typed in. We can't type in numbers or at signs or exclamation marks. Uh, they have to be letters, but they're optional letters. So someone's last name who is just Ly, L-Y, right? They could put the L in and you know, then the Y and they don't have to fill the rest in, but it doesn't have to be an L. It could be someone's name, John Doe, D-O-E. It has to put the D in, that'll be made into an uppercase letter. Then O and E will be lowercase letters and no more has to be entered. So we put plenty of question marks there just to make it long enough for someone with a fairly long name. So let's try this out. We'll just start uh, copy and paste that rule uh, from there. And let's go into our seller's form and try that out, okay? So we're just gonna do it in the seller's form at the moment. There is also the seller's table as well, but let's just go into the seller's form and let's go to someone's uh, last name here. So this person here, let's go in the left-hand corner to layout view. So make sure we clicked on last name. So we're putting this mask onto the correct field and third one down is the input mask. So we type that in and we just have that. If we go back with our left hand cursor, yep, we've got our greater than L, less than, and then a whole bunch of question marks. So in the top left hand corner, flick into form view and see it's got the underscore here showing us how long we can make the last name. So 
Let's just uh, try and retype that. So let's try and put a little letter. So I'm trying to put little letter at the start, but see, it won't let me. It's just forcing it to be capitals. Even if I hold down shift and type, there's still just going to be small letters. So I think this guy was one we entered as a new one. So we just called him new seller as a test case. Uh, okay, and that's it. But Unfortunately, there's a problem, you know, what if this guy's name was Watson, so we needed to do Watson, then we need to do a hyphen because his name is Watson hyphen a hyphen then spot Smythe. So Watson Smythe, uh, we can't put in a hyphen. So, okay, maybe let's just do a space. And we can't put in a capital as well for the next part of the name. And that just looks bad. All right. And that's not good because Estelle Carnegie wrote this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think it's like the second, at one stage it was like the second highest selling book in the world after the Bible. And one of the th rules he has like in his top 10 rules is uh, never mess up a pe person's name and remember their name and use their name because to a person their name is the most treasured thing and not to spell it or say it incorrectly. So someone getting a correspondence with their name set out like that, if their name is Watson Smythe, uh, they're not going to be a happy customer. Okay, so this kind of spoils it for uh, trying to do uh, some sort of masking on names. So we got a couple of uh, famous people here. So Kate Watson Smythe. All right, she's a blogger and social influencer. Uh, we can't do her name properly as we just saw. And this uh, person here, if you've ever watched Seinfeld, that's Elaine from Seinfeld. And take a deep breath before you say her name. <gasps> Julia Scarlett Elizabeth Lewis hyphen Dreyfus. Okay, so we're going to have big problems trying to enter her name into a database system. So for these reasons, um, we don't apply any masks to the first and last names. All right, so we don't put masks on names. Okay, and it's as simple as that because we cannot cater for everyone. And with something as important as their name, we need to be able to cater for 100% of the population. Um, it's funny when you Google people, like I Googled her name and it always comes up with net worth. Everyone wants to know what someone's net worth is. Well, her net worth is supposedly about $200 million. And you might go, oh, wow, 200 million. Well, she's worked really hard for that. She's been, uh, out doing comedy and learning lines and on TV shows for years and years. So, you know, that's fine. Her dad, though, he owned this big energy company in America and he's actually worth, I think, like more than three and a half billion. So, yeah, like those oil tycoon sort of guys or energy company guys. Whoa, they're kind of like, you know, they're right up there with Bill Gates and Elon Musk and uh, you know everyone else. But anyway, we're getting very sidetracked there. Uh, so that's it, the lesson's finished. We're ready to save our database. So let's just go across to access and do that. So we can close that table. And yes, we do want to save those changes. So remember, when we're saving things, the little uh, disk up the top left-hand corner there, the icon only saves the item we're currently doing. So if we were working on a query, let's say, like the things that need collecting and nothing needs collecting at the moment by the looks of it in the bargain bar, um, that will save the query, okay? But to save the whole database, you need to go up to the left-hand corner here and go File, and then Save As, Save As Access Database, do your Save As, pick a place uh, for it to go. So let's just do that. We'll just go into where we're doing our access work and this would be input masks and we'll just say that's input masks finished. So that's our finished one and save that there. And that'll save the whole database. When you open a database to come back, there's this yellow bar. You just always click enable content on that. Okay, so congratulations on finishing that input masks lesson with us. Input masks are quite a tricky thing. Now we've got this uh, one page reference guide, which is part of the materials with the resources you can get with this lesson from our website. So this would be really handy to like print out and have with you or uh, to just have the PDF, the one page PDF, so you can just click it any time and you're in there and can look up um, various sort of masking patterns that are used in access, okay? And 
something else we wanted to do just before we ended the lesson was uh, let's just function f11 here we wanted to give a shout out for a friend of ours a good friend uh, we used to teach maths as well as IT but now we're sort of teaching all multimedia photography um, IT in high school but Spiro here with Vivid Math uh, is just an awesome guy and he has lots of videos as you can see here for all things mathematical so if you need help with any of your maths kind of work or if you're in America it's math uh, Spiro is the guy to go and check out so check out Vivid Math on YouTube all right so that's going to help you out a lot with your maths okay so I'm the guy that helps you with IT need some math help for high school type stuff uh, Spiro's your man for that all right so that's our little shout out let's just go back here and finish up so look thanks very much for watching the lesson and we're hoping to kind of keep putting out lessons on our YouTube channel about once a week so make sure you click the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel uh, in the detailed description we will put a timeline there with jump links so that if you're only interested in say how to do the phone number validation for Australian phone numbers you'll be able to just click on the time link and go straight to that section of the video we'll also of course have the link to our website where all the resources are and so we hope you've we've helped you out a lot and uh, yeah now you're going to have your databases nice and tight and the data really clean uh, by using masking and field validation.